Very good to meet you, bro. Hey, I'm so happy you're on here, bro. I appreciate you. Hey, I was thinking like, like they they want they want to learn from you. So, uh, I'm just gonna try to ask all the questions I can to you. I'm a um, advertise this as like a space for them to like get real knowledge from an, someone who's been in the NBA space. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Are you so, yeah. are you so cool or no? Are you so cool? Too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just. I'm just working out. I'm just working out right now. I just uh, I just got back from Jamaica. I had like a little week vacation after summer league. And I got back here. How was summer league? It was good, bro. It was a good experience. It was a good experience. Bro, is that shit like just a doghouse? Like I can imagine. <laughs> like I was watching some, and it felt like everyone was trying to get theirs. That's how it is every year. I mean. I mean that's literally what it is though. Like, everybody's fighting for roster spots. Everybody's fighting for contracts like that's literally what it is yeah bro. yeah no it's, it's, it's sometimes it's bad basketball yeah yeah i was i was watching like i feel like it's so hard to develop chemistry and that shit no yeah for sure i mean you're thrown together like five days before like it's crazy even for like rookies like you get drafted and then a week later you're playing in a summer league game how do they treat you do they treat you good yeah you mean like the clippers yeah yeah, that's that's a great organization. I've heard from a lot of people around the league, like the way they run things, like it's a that's like the best, that's like the best organization to be in. There you go. Okay, so mm -hmm. you should like tell uh, your story because I, I bet you people don't know, and then and then we'll get into just questions. You guys will just fire away. Like he's in the league, so he can teach you guys shit. No, nah, for sure. I appreciate you, Hans, but. But yeah, I can I can give like the the slim down version of it because I don't want you talking like for too long about it. But uh -huh. basically, I was in high school. Um, I didn't have any offers. I wasn't playing a whole lot. Um, I got into like writing about basketball because I was like, if I can't play anywhere, I don't have any offers. I'm not playing. I gotta. I want to do something within basketball, so I started writing about it. Um, had a couple articles that went on Bleacher Report. Um, but then one day after I graduated high school, um, one of my friends, you know, he actually asked me to play in an AU tournament. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll play. And it was like I was filling out a spot. Like they needed five players to play. I was the fifth dude. So we were playing like everybody's playing like 40 minutes a game. Like they're playing the whole game. Um, it was really, really fun. It was actually a really big time tournament. Like it was in um, Orlando at Disney. And I was playing a whole lot, and some coaches recognized me there. He said, yeah, you're pretty good. But, I mean, it was after high school, so it was really late in the process. So I actually got recommended to go to a prep school. Mm -hmm. And then once I went to a prep school, which is basically like a fifth year of high school. And then once I went yeah. to a prep school. Um, Co coaches like, at that tourney recommended that? There was one, one coach. There was there, – it was actually – there was actually a D2 school, Lincoln Memorial University. It's a really good division too, that wanted me to go there. Um, as like, like I'd redshirt my first year since it was really late in the process. And I was really about to go there. But then another coach, a, a division one school coach, uh, his name is Wes Long. He was the UNC Asheville coach at the time. He recommended I go prep, which is basically like a fifth year of high school. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I went into his prep school program, not really knowing too much about it. And they were about like, 70 kids there there were like six different teams i was trying to navigate to get on a team where i could like play you know because i didn't really get to do that a lot in high school and shoot i ended up i started i started on the first team didn't really play a whole lot went down to like the c team with like some of my boys that i knew there and i was able to play a whole lot um get some film myself get some game reps it was really really yeah. good for me i was i was doing well we were winning yeah. um and then I ended up, I ended up like some people were noticing me, some of the coaches noticed me. I ended up going up to the A team and finishing up the year there. And we had a really good season, we finished like 32 and eight. We were a really good prep school team. But then the end of the year had came and I was like, dang, I need to get some film myself because it's been yeah. a while. Like, like I got it for, for colleges to, to know me or sign me. I got to get my, my, myself out there. So. One day on a bus ride, I'm like grabbing the team iPad. I'm like screen recording like all the clips of the games. Um, I make myself like a three minute mix. I post it on Twitter. I got myself DMs from Ohio University and Longwood University. That's um, crazy, bro. Yeah, and then I ended Wait, up. 
I ended up uh, going to Ohio University, and then the rest is it from there. That's so crazy, bro. Were people posting stuff on Twitter like crazy back then, or no? Nah, not really. It wasn't even me that posted it. It was the prep school's Twitter page. Oh, I got you. It. I got you. And they had like they had a bunch of followings from universities and stuff. I guess I guess so. It wasn't the Twitter page wasn't even that big. It was like okay. I gotta ask you followers. this. Bro. I gotta ask you this. So I know you were on C team. Where did did uh, did Ohio know that I was on a um? Because you were probably you were cooking. Were they like were they ass or were the was the comp good for the C team? Yeah. The the comp the comp was pretty good. I played like a couple games down there. And it was really, and like I said, and the mix that I posted was like a compilation of like everything. So it was some yeah. A team film, C team film. Yeah. They weren't really like too, they didn't really ask too many questions about like the competition I faced. Cause I mean, in the film, you can see who I'm playing. Yeah. But it was still pretty good competition down there. Hey, bro. Hey, all right, bro. That's, that's what's up. And I'm, I know uh, you've told that story probably a billion fucking times. So sorry for making you tell that again. Nah, but, good, but let's get into the questions, bro. Okay, first of all, I want to say this live is brought to you by Grandmaster Hoops. I don't know how to how to, how to pin your shit, so I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna uh, throw, throw a tag down. He's the stuff. Go check him out. Hey, t- touch on like how important cardio is, as w- and then do you have basketball specific cardio? That's funny. You, you that's that's funny. I was just having a conversation today with my boys. I, like I was on a phone call with them today about how important that is. Like. Just being in shape, like that can put you so much further ahead than everybody else. Like, forget like the skill aspect, forget like the strength aspect, or like the physical aspect of basketball. Like, just being able to outrun somebody down the court or um, move your feet more, or like, you know, just give like literally more full effort more than someone else makes such a difference oh. and that's the stuff that like a lot of people will tend to know that stuff will stick out like when everybody's tired everybody's got their hands on their knees and stuff and you're like still running you're still picking up full court like that in it that in it of itself is such like a it's such an aspect of basketball that sticks out in people's minds when they watch you play uh do you have like a uh like any like because a lot of times when people ask, like, they're trying to, like, you know, like, okay, what do I do? What do you know what I mean? Like, some practical thing someone could do. Like, if they're like, okay, I want to get my conditioning up. Like, how often should I run or whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, as far as as far as far conditioning, like, specifically, I mean, I really, like, when I, when I, this summer, I just got myself a new trainer. It was, like, the first time I actually ever got a trainer, like, an actual, like, trainer to work me out one-on-one. And his workouts... Or yeah. like hour thirty, two hours long, and like it's like work. Like, yeah. like every drill, every cone you're going around, every like shy, every rep, like it's 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 work. And I think like I don't think me personally, I don't think like you running on a treadmill or you like doing sprints down and back. I don't think that really helps you. I think you gotta just be in. I thought you have. I think you have to do as much basketball, like five on five. Yeah, go hard as fuck. Yeah, I think that's the best way you can do it. I don't. I don't really believe that tra- that running the treadmill or so, in certain intervals translates. So okay, dude, I want to ask you this question. So everyone has a different take on this. I feel, but it's uh, he said, uh, Manu said, I'm just starting basketball, and people call me very talented, but in game I'm nervous AF and don't play. So like, what's your take on like how did you develop comp? Because I know you didn't play a lot in um high school like but how did you get to that point where like all right bro like like you were you know a senior in high school would you average like two points or something you average yeah. like two points as a senior all of a sudden you're at ohio like how did you get you know what i mean what was the process how did you get to yeah that i would say there's there's two answers to the question at least from what i can get from my personal experience so there were summers where like for example, my freshman year to sophomore year summer, like I put in like so much work, and when I, like when I say like workout, I'm not just like working out to work out three times a day. I'm working out for myself. Like when I'm working out and I'm like doing a specific drill, I'm working on a ball handling drill or something. I'm not working out to get ten reps, and then I'm done. I'm working out to get like 
until I feel confident in getting this move right, like I'm going to stay right. here. And right. it, and, it, and it's not gonna it's not it's not gonna happen in a day. Like it's gonna take like, you know, a couple of days, weeks, months, whatever, however long it may take. I'm not gonna get it done in a session, but right. I have to keep working out until mentally I feel like good enough in my game that no matter what situation where I'm at, I've mastered this move. I've mastered my jump shot. I've mastered this specific pass. Yeah. So I would, I would say working to beat your mind wow. would be the first thing. And the second thing is I would get as close to your teammates as possible because, you know, being nervous and stuff in games is something that everybody experiences. And, like, the more you can just, like, relate to it with your teammates, like, no, you're in it together. Yeah. They have your back through, like, you know, you make a dumb turnover or something, like, that you know your teammate has your back like it's all good it's not the end of the world like yeah i would say that building your relationship with your teammates and your coach sure. there's, a, there's a quote that they say like you're only as good as your coach thinks you are so building yeah. a good relationship with your coach is is very important how did you do that at ohio like so what would you do if like someone because i know this is like a story you for this a bunch of times Oh, I can't play because my coach is like gonna yell at me or something. Like, what would what would you do in that situation? Like, I I, I can't play because my coach will yell at me. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. Say 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 what you got to say. So like, I, a lot of times people ask me like, like, I just feel like like I get nervous playing in front of my coach or I get nervous. You know what I mean? Like, how do you overcome that? Like, if you don't have a relationship with them. I mean, one, I'd work on it. So <laughs> whatever it is, I mean, your coach, like, he, he's got to love something. Like, he's got to love players that work really hard, players mm -hmm. that communicate. Like, there's certain things that you can do in a basketball co court that every coach will love. I'll also yeah. say that talking, talking loud on defense, like, literally just talking throughout the game, saying something that gives, that, that yeah. lets the coach know that you're locked in and lets him know yeah. that you understand what you're doing. It even gets you going in the fact that, like, you know, you're there, you're you're present, you're in the moment, you're on the court. Um, and then, like I said, I would also relate with your teammates. So, you know, if you don't have your coach to lean on, you know, you got your teammates to lean on. So, hey, I got a great question, dude. So, I know this is probably something you dealt with a ton in uh, at uh, Ohio and in and in the league. It's Two kind of two questions. Advice for smaller guards and how do you scorn someone that is more athletic and taller than you? Advice for yeah, I actually made a couple of videos on these, but I always say like and it's and it's kind of unfair. Like the smaller you are, the better you are. You got to be at basketball. Yeah, that's like, facts. Like you got like every single aspect. You got to be a better you you got, you got to be a great shooter. You got to be a great leader. Yeah. Um, I would I would really boil it down to three things like you got to be a pesk on defense like picking up full court changing the game in your in your way you have to it you you got to be a really good shooter a lot of a lot of teams a lot of coaches no one's going to really want like a 510 guy who can't shoot even like if you're really good at getting to the rim like there's just certain skill sets that you're going to need at, at that height yeah um and like i said and like you said being a leader like leading for your team, uh, doing little things like taking charges, being selfless. Um, but like I said, you, you got to really have like a lot of skill things of basketball down the smaller you are, like floaters in between mm -hmm. games, um, limitless threes. It's definitely not easy, but it's something that as a small guard, you know, you sure. got to have. And what about uh... – how do you score on someone that's more athletic and taller than you? Like, if you get that switch on the big man, like, what are you looking for? Like, what's your mind doing? Yeah, I mean, you you got to really, I mean, like, a lot of people who are taller and more athletic, you know, you got to think they're always trying to, like, block shots. They're trying, they're trying to they're trying to get in passing lanes. They're just trying to make plays. So, I really, my best advice would be, like, not to let them speed you up and play at your own pace. Mm -hmm. So, just as simple, like, as literally, like, getting into their body and shot faking like you'd be surprised like just how how easy how simple it is for them because they want to make a highlight they want yeah they want yeah yeah they, they want, yeah. They so want yeah they want to put on a show for people and stuff so 
really just playing at your pace. And I would recommend, like, if you go into the paint, always playing off two feet so you can draw these fouls. Like, and not just shot fakes either, like ball fakes too. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that's something that's really lost in today's game. Like, Luca does a great job at yeah, it. Yeah, I was about to say. But, like, those – Chris Paul is really good at it. Like, just those those simple pass fakes, you'd be surprised how, how often they work. Like, after you get off to – in when you're, like, in that mid-range area, you come off to it. Yeah, and, yeah, whatever. exactly. I got you. Exactly. Uh, also, you can have your take on this, but J- Jalen Brunson is a great guy to watch for that. He's, Jalen Brunson He is, cooks yeah. big men, and he yeah. gets in the post and shit. You're right. You're, and he's not, he's not overly fast – He's slow, he bro. He's yeah, he, he's not athletic. He takes his time. He's tough. Yeah. How do you? Okay. Yeah. How do you how do you prepare your mind for a game? So before a game, what's your like? How do you get your mind right? Um. I hope, me personally, I'm always taking a pregame nap. I'm always sending a player out for the game. And then, I mean, this is something I actually recently just started doing, but I kind of will listen to sounds before games. Mm-hmm. Like, on the way to the bus or in the locker room, like, instead of music, I'll listen to stuff that will really clear my head and calm my mind. Mm-hmm. And, this, and this isn't something that, like, if, if you wanted to start doing this before games, that will just instantly fix. Like, it's going to take some time for you to practice it, like, off the court, um, on your own, and like, non-game situations. But the more and more you do it, you'll train your brain to get in, these, like, in this, like, zen mode to calm down your nerves. I got you. Okay, what's this from B Rose? Shout out B Rose, that's my guy right there. He's in the Discord. Go pop in the Discord. Uh, what's the biggest difference during games from high school to college to NBA? That's a good question. High school, college to NBA. The biggest difference in games. And how'd you adjust to it? I would actually say high school and NBA play more. They're similar, and college is the different one. Yeah. Um, college, I'd also say guys play the hardest. Um, like every game, every second, every minute. You know, you're not playing all. It's it's four. It's eight less minutes. Yeah. The shorter court. There's not as good as shooters as there are in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, guys are playing a lot harder. Yeah. I would say it's a, I would say it's a little bit more physical too. Like it's not as much flopping and just like drawing those, yeah. you know, those those fouls like there are in the NBA. Yeah. Um, but in high school, you have players that play kind of like NBA players. Like if you're a good high school player, you know, you'll get your guy who drops thirty and he's isoing and he's doing his own thing. There's not a lot of that in college. Um, from transitioning to each of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the spacing in the NBA is also ridiculous, too. But at the same time, the athletes are like, you know, there's, high school and college can't compare. Like, it, now there's a guy with a 7-5 wingspan contesting your shot at the rim. And, like, the, like you know how I said they're spacing. Like, you might be open for a second, but your decisions have to be a lot faster because guys are quicker, guys are longer, guys are more athletic. So You think people play less hard in the NBA? In the regular season, yes. In the playoffs, that's no. I play, guys are playing really hard in the playoffs. But in the regular season, yes. Who was the toughest dude you had to guard in the league? Uh, De'Aaron Vox, for sure. Was it because he was just so fast? Yeah, I mean, he's so fast and he's so skilled. Like, he's got a mid-range game. He's got to he's gotta stop on the dime. He's, he can get all the way to the rim. Like, it's... You kind of have to like live with certain things with this game. Yeah. So, all right. I got a really good question for you because it's like some of the stuff you put out. I personally have learned a bunch of stuff just from your videos. And this guy, Mr. Boombastic, asked, How do you work on decision making, like making better reads on where to pass or where to shoot? Like, how did you work on that? And like, what would, what advice would you give for someone younger who wants to work on that stuff? Yeah. That's actually, I like that question because a lot of that stuff that you just asked, people would categorize it as feel for the game. And I think, and a lot of people say, like, you know, either you're born with it or you're not. And I don't think that's true. I think personally, anything in basketball, you can learn. I don't think, like, anything is impossible to do. Like, anyone can or cannot do certain things for a skill set or feel. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think actually, like, playing 2K is actually a really, really good way to... 
uh-huh. to increase your feel for this. Like I like my best friend, I play 2K with him sometimes, right? And he's actually somebody who struggled with this. But literally it's a simulated version of you in a game. And you can change your camera to, you know, the 2K camera where you can see everyone on the court from a certain angle. And you know, it really like literally tests your ability to make these reads. So like mm-hmm. someone rotates over, you click the right button to the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're wide open for a three, like what decision you're making if you're either shooting, pump faking, or, or driving. Like you can literally make real life decisions in a game and you can see mm-hmm. what works and what doesn't. What'd so, you play, like Pro-Am or like play now? I play Park. Pro-Am, I think it's like, a, it's, it's a lot of players on a small court. It can get unorganized sometimes, but I think parks are really good, like a really good way to do it. Even on defense too, like you can learn rotations. Somebody gets blown by knowing when to go like to the corner. Yeah. Like, I know there's a lot of people that can struggle like in real time, like, you know, in high school and, and, and stuff. You go through those those days, those defensive days where you got to go to rotation, rotations. And, yeah. And I think 2K like really helps with that. Like you, yeah. like someone gets blown by, you know when to rotate. You yeah. know, you you get to know like who's a shooter and who's not a shooter. Mm. And it's the same. It's the same concepts I can apply in real life. What about like okay? What about like you're like because I saw the the post you done yesterday about coming off a ball screen. You gotta have high hands. Like what about those little reads? I know that's like you can't get it off 2K. Is that just from playing a lot or like something you've seen, just learned over the years or what? Shoot, I was just through just watching a bunch of basketball. Like I mean, like growing up, all I ever did was watch every LeBron game, every LeBron YouTube video, every LeBron video I could. And I'd watch it and I'd be like, all right, how is he doing this? And is yeah. it something that, that I can do? And it's like there are times like in that video yesterday, he's not even like literally playing defense. He's literally just waiting for somebody to to make a pass or, or mm-hmm. so he can get a steal. And I don't know. I think that's I think that's also very, I haven't really talked about it too much in this live, but watching film, like watching basketball is just as important. Yeah. It's just as important as any amount of playing can do. Yeah, hey, who's playing 2K? Don't play it all day. That's not a that's not an excuse to play all day. No, facts. But yeah, I think that's there's, there's a lot of NBA players. There's also like I saw Jaron Jackson the other day talking about it. De'Aaron Fox talked about it as well. Like 2K does have a purpose. It, it can't it can't serve you well. So, okay, this is a good question for the De'Aaron Fox thing. Ooh, ooh, what should I ask? Yeah, okay, tips on guarding a very fast player. A lot of it. A lot of it depends on like, you know, who you are. So you know, if you're if you're a guy who's a little smaller and smaller and quicker and not as tall or long, you probably have to to get into his hand a little bit, and you can't let him get that initial burst. Mm-hmm. So you you might have to like bother him so he can't get in a rhythm to take o- to take off and sprint and stride and stuff. But if you're a little bit longer and stuff, maybe I would just give him give him his space. You know, he's a guy probably fast. Most fast guys, you know, they want to get downhill, they want to finish. So, I'd really just use your length and avoid as much contact as possible, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Like eventually, he's got to shoot or got to pass it. And if you're like, if you keep your distance and use your length, you can make whatever it is he's got to do hard for him. Mm-hmm. I like that. Do you think you want to avoid contact so he can't just like burst around you or grab your arm or something? Or what do you Yeah, mean? exactly. I mean, I, I mean, at the end of the day, like you obviously don't want to keep backing up to like you get underneath the rim. But if you're if you're taller or longer than somebody who is faster than you, at the end of the day, they have to jump to shoot or they have to they have to like get the ball up here to do anything. And if you're st- if you're in their way and you're like bothering them and you're tracing the ball, that I mean at the end of the day they 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 can't really do much. Mm-hmm. They might have to you know hit a step back jumper or two first. But live with that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, All right, I got a very good, good question for you because I know yeah you obviously went to prep school. Someone said, "What's your best advice for a 19 year old with no offers and starting taking hoop serious?" Because I think there's a big stigma around like you have to get an offer in high school. Can you talk a little bit about like how 
there's like possibilities. Like if you even if you don't play in high school, like I feel like you could not play a single minute on all verse. I just like you you play two minutes or whatever, or average two points, and it's like now you're here. Like, what is it like? Um, what's like basketball like outside of high school? And like, how do you learn how to uh, you know get on a roster and go pro or whatever? Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of it is you know word of mouth. Can, sadly, word of mm-hmm. mouth can. Like, for example, like just knowing the son of a head coach or just knowing somebody who can put you in contact or like getting your film out there will will really help you. But yeah, like high school, honestly, like most people aren't really getting to where they'd want to get like division one offer. Or you're not really getting that through high school. High school doesn't really have the in a lot of places doesn't really have the best competition. And that's not really what a lot of scouts and stuff will look for. A lot of, a lot of times they'll be in the AU circuits or uh, they'll check out JUCOs um, or sometimes they'll go to preps as well. Like out of all those options, like I said, high school is probably not like coaches really aren't going to high school games yeah. compared to those other events that I just, that I just mentioned. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate the roses, go sleep. Um, and I say this, bro, like, it's not hard to get on. I think people think it's hard to get on college. Like, I've always seen that stat, like, oh, 2% of high school basketball players play college. I think you really, you could get on a college roster if you wanted. Like, I've seen a bunch of people who really suck, like, on a JUCO roster. Like, you can easily get on a JUCO roster if you just email coach and are um, persistent about it. Like, you could be like, oh, let me just redshirt, whatever. Like, there's a lot of, like, I'd say when I was on JUCO, we had like 30 guys at the beginning of every year. They just let whoever comes on and then people just quit, 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 quit. If you don't, be on the team. And that's an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity. If you're good enough, you're going to play, you can get offers, whatever. So like, it's definitely not good after high school. If you don't play well in high school, bro, you can go to college. You can go to college. You can make pros. Like, there's a lot of people who did that. So For sure. For sure. Um, For sure. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting yourself out there is really important. Getting yourself out there. And like I said, if you're not playing a whole lot in high school, you don't have a lot of film. Like, for example, like going to LA Fitness, like the, the amount of people that I got in contact with or people that helped me talk to other people that I gained from like going to local pickup runs around my area mm-hmm. or like LA Fitnesses. Like you can, perf- like I've had, like I remember I had to have a couple good days there. And then a lot of some people ask you, yo, do you plan anywhere you do this? No, you should check out this camp. Like, just getting yeah. yourself out there. Yeah. Um, so a lot yeah. of people can know who you are. So many times, I've had this seven so many times. So many times, like, I feel like when you're younger, it's a lot more scary to talk to people. Maybe because it's like you were, like, disciplined as a kid or whatever. Like, whatever. But <laughs> but if you can just talk to people, like, people who you're hooping around, a lot of times they'll know someone or know someone. People want to help you out, bro. There's that certain few people who are just dicks and they're just, you know, not okay with themselves inside. But the majority of people, if you talk, if you go to a hoop session, the best thing you can do, I can feel like, is talk to people, is get in contact with people, like get relationship with people, because that's how moves are made. You know, you meet someone who knows the yeah. head coach of a JUCO or yeah. whatever. Oh, I can get you on the team. Let me just put you in contact with this, this, this. Yeah. Talk to people. This just means like, hey, how are you doing? What's up? It doesn't mean like, do you know anyone who can do this for me? Like, you just talk to them, bro. Just be a nice person. Be sociable and talk to people. That's an underrated skill that not a lot of people talk about, especially if your daddy's not in the NBA. If you're, <laughs> if you're, you know what I mean? Like, no, factually. That, that's the, just being a good person, it goes a long way, man. The doors are yeah, open for you. For real, because people want to help people who help out. You help other, other people, they're going to help you back. Exactly. What do you think about transferring, especially – your senior year if you have no offers and no looks senior year of high school yeah i mean i assume yeah what do i think transferring to my senior year of high school um i mean it really depends the situation that you're going through right now like are you i would always say you'd want to go somewhere where you can just either showcase your ability or you're in a really good program where the coaches know a bunch of coaches that can get you to the next level that you want to be in so if if let's say you're in an area that you don't really know know a whole lot of people you just being at a place and putting up your numbers and getting film 
that in itself could be good enough. That in and of itself can be good enough. You can email as several coaches. I had a I had a really good friend this past summer. Um played at a university for four years, but he didn't play a whole lot. Like hardly played at all. Um, but he just emailed so many different coaches, like literally practice film. He emailed coach after coach after coach. Mm-hmm. He ended up getting he ended up getting a D two spot. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm just saying, I'm saying that to say that it's possible. Like you don't need, you don't need, like you, you, you can work with film. You can work with stats. You just need something on your resume that when you do talk to somebody that you can show them. This might be a tough question to answer on here, but how do you, how to read a pick and roll offense and defense? Or like, uh, I mean, like, I feel like that's like kind of like a practical thing where you can break it down. But like, what are your tips? Like, if someone's like, okay, how do I go for pick and roll? Like, what are your? What's yeah, it? for sure. I mean, I, I'll give a. I obviously can't answer it just black exactly. and white, but I can give like a pretty nice breakdown that, you know, when you're running a pick and roll, like I've ran a lot, like thousands of hundreds and thousands of pick and rolls they're like especially when you're playing like in a game setting there's only so there's only so many reads to make yeah and but and the more and more you do them you'll know which one it is like if you're running a pick and roll let's say you're at the you're at the wing you're you're on a wing and it's you and a five man you're 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 looking for the five man. You're, lo- I mean, first you're looking for your own shot, which yeah. you know a lot of the times isn't isn't there. If if somebody's playing good defense, if that's not there, then you have the five rolling. If someone is, and then if the five is rolling, you're also looking at that backline defender if they're gonna tag and take the five man. Yeah. And if that happens, then the skip pass is there. So really, you only you're you're really only looking for three things: your shot first, the five man on a pocket or lob pass. And then the skip to the opposite corner. Mm-hmm. Anything else is a little bit more advanced, but if you can master these three, I like that. Those those are those are those are pretty. Those are the most common things that that one of those three will always be open in a pick and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, how'd you get bounce? Okay, here's there's one. How'd you get bounce, bro? Um, shoot. I mean, I don't really have. A, I can't get like a. I mean, I always worked out, you know, I did a bunch of legs, exactly. a bunch of different plyometrics, and there's a bunch of videos on TikTok I've seen about it. But I remember going into my junior to senior year of high school, I would just constantly jump. Yes, bro. Like, like I would, uh, I remember a lot of times too, like growing up, I, I dunk on mini hoops as well, yeah. like, and that really helped. But I was always jumping, like I was trying to get my first dunk on 10 feet, I was playing 100 basketball, yes, I was trying to jump and get rebounds, but I just constantly jumped, and I constantly practiced, I guess, the art of jumping, yes, <laughs> and, it, and it helps, it helps, like over time, you just keep keep on doing it and doing it, your legs get stronger, you get used to it. It's a lot of things like that in um, in basketball in general, yeah. like there's, there's yeah, the not, angles. yeah, there's not like a... It's not really something you can just do and you'll automatically fix it. A lot of it comes down to like how many times are you willing to continuously rep out the mix yes. to where you've mastered it. Yeah. Like literally just repping things out more is a whole lot better than just saying, All right, I'm gonna do this three sets of ten. Yeah. And then you gotta spend yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you gotta spend another time like thinking about exactly what's right and shit. Like Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't have to think as much. Just do it, right? Just go and do it. Just do it. Just do it. Fail at it and then do it again and then do it over and over and over. Is there a specific player you model your game after? Yeah. I mean, growing up, um, like I said, I was a huge believer that there is nothing that you can't do on a basketball court. And it's kind of that stubborn naiveness, I would say. I, I don't, that, yeah, I saw your video on this. That Yeah, that got me to here. But I, I watched I know so what much you're LeBron. Saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's kind of, it, you kind of need that, like, I can do it. Yeah. You know, regardless of anyone, what regardless of what the numbers may say or what percent is, you kind of need that that irrational confidence in yourself to be able to, to do things. Because if you were to just... If you were to just your whole life just go with the numbers and just say, you know, 
oh, I mean, there's, there's, yeah. there's only there's so many guys out there that's doing this, so many guys that are working. I never even like really that never even really crossed my mind. I was just thinking, yeah, like, yeah I'm gonna do it. They're humans just like you, Stefan exactly. Marby, like you said. They didn't have these workout plans and, mm-hmm. and regimens. Like they tried stuff out, they worked on it. Like it, there's no there's no set detailed answer for a lot of these things. It's yeah, really yeah. just how hard you're willing to to work to get there. How do you handle the ball better against an aggressive defender or getting pressed full court? So, like, a lot of it is a mindset. Mm -hmm. Like, the person who's ever asking this question, like, the guy who commented, how do you handle pressure? You have to view it as, like, view it as reverse. If you had to guard someone full court, you're probably not, you know, you don't really want to do it. You know, it's more of a, um, like, like think about you got you got to view yourself as like you have the advantage, like you have the ball, you're on offense. The guy who's guarding you doesn't know what you're about to do. You like it, you you really just have to make one move and go. Like, there's no like, like you are at the advantage. You are they are at your mercy. They have to guard you ninety four feet away from the basket. Like this, yeah. the advantage is. For you. So my best advice was to to literally view it like that. Like you, it's not someone's guarding me full court. It's like, oh, I have the ball and I have this much space to work with. Mm. But how do you train smarter like an NBA player? Shoot, like whoever's asking that question, I'm assuming is in high school or in college. And I would say like, <laughs> Like a lot of the NBA players who got here were not training smart. Like they weren't. Yeah. Like they were. Like I said, they were going all out. They were training for like eight hours a day. Like they were. They were training three, four times in a day. Like the the when you're young, the best thing you can do is is like I said, it's rep things. Like if you want to get better at something, you have to continuously rep it out. Like if you want to get better at an in and out cross like literally it is as simple as just doing in and out crosses every single day every time you can possibly do something or if you want to work on your form it's how many times can you rep out your form like it that like that's that's really all it is how many times can you can you do something they say i think it takes like ten thousand hours for you to master to you to master something like can you put that to whatever it is you want to master and then once you've practiced all of these things, you know, go to go to your LA fitnesses, go to your twenty four hour fitnesses and try it. Try it out against like try it out against competition that's not, yeah, you know, is. high school game like setting. Like try things out, fail at them, notice what's wrong, notice what you can notice what you did was right and, and keep working out. I think there's a I think you need to play five on five basketball. Cause a lot of guys nowadays it's a lot of one on one training, they have their trainers and like I said, I didn't. I didn't get my first trainer until this summer. Yeah, so I, I got here specifically like all this. Like I said, I just played so much pickup, mm-hmm. and I watched a whole bunch of film. And I'd watch the film, and I'd try things out, and I'd realize what does and doesn't work. And then when I got into actual game situations, you know, I'd already, I'd already played so much five on five, like reads and stuff, just became so much easier. Mm-hmm. You you work out, you do these one on one settings, you don't. You you don't you don't practice. That means you're not practicing pick and roll stuff in, in five on five. You're not you're not getting to to read and practice everything that you want. Every, every yeah, everybody wants to have a bag. Everybody wants to get it is get do this and that. But there's not a lot of those guys that actually play in, in organized basketball. There's one maybe two per team. But yeah. a lot of times you you have to play. You you have to fill your role. Bro, you don't even need a crazy bag like. I'll say this, bro. I was watching James Harden highlights last night. I'm telling you, he averaged 36. I love, hey, I love James Harden. James Harden is my favorite player of all time because he's so simple, bro. He averaged 36 doing this. Tween cross, tween cross, tween cross. Free read, bro. And that's what he did every single time he had an ISO. It's insane. Like, it yeah. shows you don't need it, some crazy factors. Uh, yeah, there, there's so many There's so many NBA players like that like tim hardaway had one move exactly bro <laughs> he, had a, he had a tween cross and if you did if you bet on that i'll just tween and, exactly. <laughs> and if, if anything else doesn't work i'll tween cross and exactly I'll, bro. And I'll pull up like you know you if then like i said if you you can really go that far off of just mastering one thing mm-hmm. like like i said That's just true. like like i just broke it down with the tim hardaway like 
if someone's biting on a tween cross, then just tween. If someone's biting on a tween, then just blow by. Like, you don't need to do tween behind the back setup. Yeah, like, it's, it's really that simple. Yeah. A lot of people don't talk about how to improve defense. What do you, what would you say if someone's like, how do I get better at defense? Because a lot of people just say, like, just try harder and blah, blah, blah. Like, but I really think there's, like, a mental side that I see in a lot of guards that I don't see in big men as much. But, like, when you're smaller, you got to learn little things. Like, what would you say are some things you have to learn, you know? like. Yeah, I've made a lot of tips on this too. But me, me, like I remember growing up, you know, laterally, it wasn't the most laterally quick. You watch guys like in the NBA, like Kyle Anderson, who are like really, really slow, but they're really good defenders. Mm-hmm. Or um, like just, just I remember like, like I said, just playing in pickup runs and playing, just playing in games. Just knowing people's tendencies puts you so ahead of the game. So like sitting down before you before you want to play, let's say you go to LA Fitness, before you play, just watching who you're playing. Picking up on like, oh, this guy really loves to go right. This guy, oh, every time he gets it, he's doing an in and out first. Yeah. Or this guy shooting it every time he yeah. dribbles with his left hand. Like yeah. if you the more you know you the more you know stuff like that, it puts you at such yeah. an advantage because you already know what guys are gonna do. You already know people's tendencies. You already know what's gonna happen. And like I said, it, it, like I said, this this whole life, it's not gonna, it's not something that you're just instantly gonna develop. But the more and more you watch film on players, the more and more you you you, you go to these events and watch games, you'll pick up on these things like, oh, he always likes to do this. This is yeah. his main setup. If he's getting to this move, this is gonna happen. Like, and the more and more you do it, it'll be easier to pick up on tendencies. Yeah. So he said, how do you get consistent with making reads? And- yeah. No. Like I was saying earlier, you can you can practice making reads in, in 2K. You can practice making yeah, there reads you go. at there and, you go. and local pickup run. It's like do it in a situation where you know it really doesn't matter the outcome. Like do it in a place where you're free to fail, and and it's and it's fine. Like you could just do it again yeah, and go. again. You, and you have to fail. You have to fail in order to grow. Sure, this one's good. How do I not lose confidence after missing my first few shots in a game? Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin made a video on this, and I really liked it. He said he had this trainer that every time he shot, every time he worked out with him, every time he he, he passed him the ball to shoot a shot, he said, next one's in, next one's in, next one's in, next one's in, next one's in. And he did it so much over days, months, years, that it just got engraved into his mind that, like, every time he shot, like, the one the previous shot literally doesn't even matter like make miss whatever i'm gonna make the next shot like next one's in next one's in and that's kind of the mindset you got to have it's 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 a combination of like you know like i said if 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 you really want to get something down continuing to repping it out repping it out repping it out repping it out that one you can fix it on your own that you're very confident like oh i've missed it this way i can just fix it yes on the next shot or yes. you get to the mindset of like I'm literally I literally don't even yes don't even I'm care that I've missed that's how you yeah. shots yes that's how you're free to be yourself bro what should I train in weight room I'm not I'm not a weight room expert um, when I I will say though when I first I've gone through phases um, like when I when I I went through one summer where I literally did. <laughs> I did like a hundred pull-ups every day and like a hundred push-ups every day. And I was just, I was just repping out like upper body. I thought upper body was so important. Like I got to get big so I can bump people and push people. But I found out, especially being in the NBA, like it's your legs that it's really the most important. Yeah. Like the legs will give you the strength you need to, if you do get knocked off your path to, to be fine or your, your, your legs and your core, your legs yeah. and your core are probably the Absolutely. two biggest things you, you, you really can work Absolutely. on. Absolutely. And honestly, like a lot for me this summer and previous summers, if you're working as much as you can in basketball, you'll kind of naturally get strong. Like, like I'm yeah. like this past summer, I did so many heavy ball workouts, yeah. so many ball handling drills that my forearms just naturally just became so much stronger. My wrist strength, I just shot so many shots, just became so much stronger. Absolutely. Through basket, like, even like, forget the weight room, you'll become stronger with your upper body. Even though it might, you might not, I mean, you might not show, you might not have the, all these biceps, but trust me, you will get stronger, like, with the basketball, with basketball movements. Tips on triple threat? How to jab and how to rip through. You got to have a real purpose with it while you're doing it.
just use your jab steps and um, step overs and pump fakes to see what the defender is going to do because most of the time they're not going to switch it up. Yeah, I say that's like good advice trick with that. Yeah, I I agree. People aren't as people are not as smart as you think they are. Yeah, think, especially on the on, on defensive side, I, especially I the athletes because they don't they don't they can get by, you know. Yeah, exactly. And and try it and and like 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 whoever's asking that question, like try it, like see, go like I said, try go out and try these things in five on five settings and see for yourself what does and what doesn't work, what's best for you. Yeah, for sure, bro. Hey, that's good, bro. Hey. Um, hey, go check out his content. Follow him. He has some fire ass videos. Like I've learned so much. My, like every single video he makes, I'm like, bro, like, thank you. Like I'm adding that. So he's super smart. Like look at his shit. You will learn so much from him. Check him out. Appreciate you for being on, bro. Seriously, it's love. Like, nah, appreciate I appreciate you, bro. You, you bro. helped a ton of people. Helped a ton of people. Helped a I ton really love your content too, bro. Like, like keep doing the stuff that you're doing as well, bro. I really like it. But I appreciate, appreciate you bro. having me today, bro. Of course, man. It's a great time, man. Hey, let's stay connected, bro. Got you, bro. My guy. Good luck. All right, man. Appreciate All you. Right.